Hi guys, I'm Nine Audio, and today I wanted to get a little bit creative with samples, and in particular a drum loop. So what I want to do is show you how I went from this to this. So there's quite a convoluted um, set of processing going on here and I'll try and talk you through it as best I can. Um, hopefully I can remember what it was that I did. The first thing I was playing around with was sending the sound, uh, ignore, sorry, ignore this uh, channel processing for the time being, um, that comes in later on. Um, basically I used a send here, bus one. Um, and I called this grit channel. Um, I'm sending this on a pre-fader. If we come down here again, you can see there pre-fader. Normally this would be in post-fader, um, but I'm using it on a pre-fader, which basically means that we can pull the fader amount down completely um, and it won't affect the send going to the grit channel. So let me just um, play this quickly. <laughs> So you can see we're still getting the input here and you can still hear this grit channel going. Uh, we're losing the dry signal from the original channel but we're still getting the send amount. If I just quickly put this back to post fader, now we're not hearing anything. If I bring the fader volume up, we're getting the dry signal coming back and the send channel coming back. So on a pre-fader, We can pull this dry amount down completely and we're still getting the send. So what am I doing on the grit channel? I've added three types of distortion or saturation. The first one is this, the head crusher, and I've dialed in the drive amount a bit. I've got a bit of a low cut going on, pulled the tone down a bit and I've pulled the output down a bit. So without, it sounded like this. And now with the head crusher, So that's adding distortion. It sounds like it's compressing it as well. Um, the next plugin I'm using is Logic's Tape Delay plugin. Now you may be thinking to yourself that I said that I was using three types of distortion or saturation, and yet this is a delay plugin. Well, the good thing with this um, tape delay plugin is that not only does it give us the delay features of tape, it also gives us the kind of saturation quality of tape. And the way that we would do this is with our tempo sync button here. Normally this would be synced to the tempo of our tune. If we unsync this, we can affect this delay amount. And if we bring this down to zero milliseconds, now we're not getting any delay um, effect from the plugin and we're purely just getting the uh, sort of saturation kind of tone tonal qualities of tape and we can dial this in more or less with the feedback and we can play around with the wet and dry amounts and also the uh, high cut and low cut so without it sounds like this and now with So we're clipping a little bit there, but um, you can hear that that is adding quite a bit of character to the sound. Now the last thing I'm doing in the chain is the camel crusher, and um, I'm basically compressing this a bit as well, and this will stop us uh, clipping on the output as well. So without. <laughs> So quite a nice gritty sound there. Now the next thing I did was to bounce uh, bounce this to audio and I bounced it to a mono audio file and I set up three um, new audio tracks. Now 
what I've done here is I've actually set up a track stack with these three uh, different audio channels with our processing on it. Now track stacks is not something I've really used that much. I've had a bit of a play about with it a while back and I've never really um, come back to it since. So I don't really know too much about it. I thought I'd give it a go for this experiment. Um, and basically I used, if you don't know how to set up a track stack, the way I did it, uh, there may be other ways, um, I selected my three audio channels, uh, came up here to track, and then uh, here where it's grayed out because we've already set one up, we would click create track stack. And then um, it will give you two options. One is a folder and the other one is a summing stack. Or, so a folder would basically, I think, just give you your audio channels, your audio files, and it will just put them into one folder so that you can adjust the volume of all of them with, with a single fader. Uh, with the summing one, which is what the one I used, it allows you to add extra processing to the group as a whole or to the track stack as a whole. I think that's the main difference. There may be other things going on. Like I say, I've not used it too much. I don't know too much about it, so I'm not really gonna talk about that here um, because I'll probably be giving you incorrect information. So let's go to um, the different um, channels. And basically what I've ended up doing is, I suppose is some kind of multi-band processing where I've separated uh, the sounds into low frequency, mid-range and high frequencies. Now the first thing I did was to play around with some low frequencies. So I think the first thing I did was I just added an EQ. Hang on, sorry, I think we're still getting, yeah, that's still soloed. So I've cut out all the highs. So I've done a high cut down to 152 hertz, a bit of a low cut and a big bump around 47 hertz and then just ducking out a little bit at 164 hertz so it doesn't wasn't getting too boxy so now we're just getting a real deep kind of thump and then i compressed it a bit um, and then i added a bit crusher on the end For a bit more oomph and also just to help us make sure we weren't clipping. I'll come back to the other processing uh, because I think I played around with this later on. So I think I started off with something like this. Then I began messing about with the high frequencies. So the first thing I did here was to add a single EQ and with a low cut up to a thousand hertz and I changed the slope and the Q factor slightly. So so you can hear what that's doing. Then I added, so you'll have to excuse the dogs fighting behind me over some soft toy that they've torn to shreds. So the next thing I did was to add a tremolo. And because this is a mono channel, it's gonna open up a mono version of the tremolo. So we're not gonna be able to get left and right pan. Uh, but what this does is it allows us to kind of duck the volume. It will basically go up and down, almost like an LFO really. And it's uh, I quite like using uh, the tremolo in this way. Um, so I've set it to 16th notes and uh, I left every, all the other settings the same. So with, with that applied, it sounds like this. So that's quite cool, I think. Um, so if we bring that back in with our low frequency uh, band, shall we call it? They sound like this together. Okay, we're already making it sound fucking awesome. So the next thing was to add a tape delay. And 
I'm trying to remember what it was that I was doing with this. I think basically I wanted to add a little bit of delay um, because the tremolo is kind of chopping the sound. It sounds a little bit glitchy and I thought if I could add a bit of tremolo to it, uh, sorry, a bit of delay to it, we could fill out a little bit of the space in between. So without first. Now with, and so here I've pulled the low cut up to 610 hertz and I think I played around with the dry and wet and the feedback amount and I've probably played around with the tempo and the, or the delay settings on that as well. Yes I did, I remember now, I did play around with the delay so that I could get this kind of very short uh, slap back delay. So that sounds like that now, which is insanely good. Motherfuckers be like, what? The next thing I did was to add a ring shifter. And again, I'm using the delay function here. Um, which I thought gave it quite an Dope us sound. Um, I was playing around with the frequency of the ring shifter. Let's have a listen. And I also pulled the dry wet amount down because I didn't want too much of that. That's getting a little bit too over the top. But that's adding quite a nice sort of texture to the sound, shall we say. Then I added a compressor, just to compress that sound a little bit. And again, a bit crusher. And this, uh, setting it to 12 bit, got the drive all the way down. Again, just to stop us clipping. So that with our low frequency uh, band sounds like this. The next thing I did, I think I came back to the low frequency one and I added a filter bank, the Evoc 20 filter bank. So before adding that, this uh, low channel sounded like this. I'll tell you what, let me just name these. Let's call it low, uh, high, mid. And then hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit better which um, channel or which band I'm working on. So yes, before the Evoc 20, it sounded like this. And now with. So it's kind of adding a weird kind of um, tonal quality to it. What I did was I pulled the form and shift down and um, I put the resonance up quite high and I've played with the, the sort of filter section. So I'm filtering out a lot of the highs and the lows. And uh, did I do anything else? I think I opened up this, whatever that is. <laughs> I suppose that's a high pass, isn't it? Um, so yeah, I've opened that up. So if I bring that back in with our high, um, channel. So without the Evoc 20, now with. Okay, now the next thing I did was to, I thought about, well, maybe I should do something with the mid frequencies. So again, I, I think the first thing I did, I think I've moved the order of the plugins around from how I had them originally, but I think I started with an EQ. So here, cutting out lows up uh, below 124 hertz, cutting out the highs above 1720 hertz, and then a bit of a dip around 365. <clears throat> so. so that sounds like that. Um, I think the next thing I did was to add this pedal board. 
I think I've got the first one turned off. I've used this uh, whammy pedal. I actually own one of these original Digitech whammy pedals, um, which I used to use all the time, uh, mainly because I was a massive Rage Against Machine and Tom Morello fan. Um, but really interesting pedal. And here, basically what I'm doing is I've got the tune amount uh, set at 0.25. So basically it's, it's uh, pitching the 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 tuning of the signal ever so slightly sharp and then it's mixed sort of 50 50 so uh, without that on it sounds like this and now with so it's almost giving us a kind of a, a slap back delay again and i decided to you know add a bit of compressor to the sound to bring that out And that's making quite a lot of difference. So I'm compressing quite hard there and I've got the makeup gain quite high. But that's quite nice. And then again, a bit crusher. And I think this was just to um, st stop any clipping and to just push a bit of driver mount up. Now I also added a tape delay, I can't remember what I was doing with this. So again, I think I was using this for a bit of saturation because I've got the delay all the way down. Yeah, again, just to add some saturation to the sound. So let's um, bring these back in, the lows and the highs. And let's add my processing effects chain, sort of one by one, and we'll hear the difference it makes. I'll start with the EQ on so that we are just getting the mids. Okay, so. Okay, so that's fat like yo mama. But it's getting a bit kind of muddy and a bit too much in in some of the frequencies. We'll come back to that in a second. Now, what I did with this mid sound is I ended up sending it to a bus send to an auxiliary channel. I'm going to call this uh, reverb one. And what I did was I added a proto verb. Um, which is by Yuhi. I believe this is a free plugin. Um, I think I'm pretty sure it is. I'll uh, I'll have to may have to double check that. If it is, I'll put a link in the description below. Um, and uh, I basically found a reverb I like the sound of. I've got the dry all the way down. I've got the wet just above 50% and the decay is up at 56, I guess that's milliseconds, is it? Um, hang on, that's better, sorry, I wasn't sending it. So we're getting quite a nice, uh, weird reverby drums uh, room sound with that now again with this sound I've set the bus on a pre fader I didn't want too much of the dry signal of the sound but I really like the reverb that I was getting with it so I've set it on a pre fader so that I could bring this dry amount down and keep the uh, the room sound or the reverb sound quite high in the mix. So let's put it back in with our other bands, the low and the high. So without the reverb. Now with. Okay. Um, I'll just come back to this mid one first and the tape delay on there. I think what I was playing around with for a while was uh, pushing this feedback up, uh, this feedback amount up quite high um, because we were getting some weird effects. I'll, tr I'll just demonstrate that quickly. Okay. 
Okay, we're getting a little bit away from a drum sound there, but in uh, somewhere around here, we're getting some quite interesting sort of artifacts from, um, basically I'm using the LFO rate and the LFO depth, and I've got the flutter rate and flutter intensity um, set. So we're getting some weird kind of tape modulation, weird warping kind of sounds when we push this feedback up. get some quite interesting effects with that. Anyway, um, so I thought I'd just show you that quickly. But as I was saying, we are getting quite a lot of mess and mud and it's really getting a bit too over the top. We've lost some of the clarity, of, particularly for drums, we want quite crisp clear drums and we don't want too much resonant frequencies between sort of drum hits getting in the way of anything else we might want to add to this later so um, oh, I probably should point out on the high channel I also sent this to a reverb so this was on bus 4 uh, let's call this reverb 2 and this time I'm just using a space designer with the gated chamber which is under the medium spaces gated reverbs gated chamber whoops hang on and all I've done here is I pushed the wet amount all the way up of the reverb and I've affected the envelope here of the decay of the impulse response so I wanted it a bit shorter than it was so dry now with the reverb So I've got that quite low down. So it's just adding a little bit of reverb to that high sound. Okay, so how are we going to sort out this muddy, messy stuff that's going on with these sounds? Okay, what I'm doing is I started with this mid channel and I'm adding a noise gate. Okay, so let's play it without the noise gates on first. Now with. So it's basically when the uh, volume dips below a certain threshold, then the noise gate will kick in and it will cut off the sound. Now we use the threshold amount here to determine at what point the noise gate kicks in. So the higher we push this, the more effect it has. Let me uh, just um, demonstrate that. So that's cutting out everything, almost. And if we bring it down, we're back to the original sound. Now the other thing I'm doing here is I'm playing with the attack, the hold and the release. So I've pushed the attack up a bit. If I bring that down, we're getting a little bit of a clicky sound, which I didn't really like. So that's why I've pushed the attack up a bit. I brought the hold down ever so slightly. I think it defaulted to 40 milliseconds. I've changed that to 30. And I've put the release up again if, I, if it's right down there. It's a bit clicky, so that's what I'm doing with that. So now let's bring it back in with our low and our highs. So without, we're getting a lot of just mess in the middle there that we don't need. So the noise gate is just cleaning that up nicely. Okay, and then on the low channel, because we're getting a lot of resonant sounds that are just kind of uh, just muddying up and filling up a lot of the space. So again, a noise gate. Let's turn that on. So 
so again we're just getting rid of some of the uh, some of the mess where we don't need it and it should just clean up our mix quite nicely so without So hopefully you could hear that, but we were getting a lot more low end rumble just happening when, when we just didn't need it. We're still getting the low the low frequency information when those sort of kicks are hitting, um, but it just cleans it up everywhere else. So remember noise gates, they can be extremely useful in this kind of situation. So what else am I doing? Um, also, because I've got this on a track stack, this is our summing track, so this is like the uh, grouped output if you like this will anything we do here will affect the group as a whole so actually the whole time I've had this on I probably should have had that off but anyway um, so the first thing I'm doing a gain plug-in just to attenuate the gain slightly um, then I'm adding a compressor so I'll tell you what let's turn these off and let's uh, So that was our sound before. Obviously we're getting a bit of clipping, so I had the gain in. And we're not clipping anymore. It might just uh, peak over a little bit occasionally, but that's not nothing to worry about too much. So now the compressor, I'm using the vintage FET and I'm not doing anything too harsh here. It's just to, you know, compress the sound and just bring it all together glue it as they say and then again a good old bit crusher just to make sure we don't get any peaks and ever so slight um, bit of drive there so very little difference it's really making to the overall sound just very minor subtle changes now I'm also sending this some uh, channel to uh, another uh, send on bus 5 and this is uh, a parallel drum compression so let's name that I probably should have done this already I think I was just having too much fun to bother naming things so again Gain plugin, bringing that down so we're not getting too much clipping. Um, then I've got EQ. And then um, I'm also using another compressor. This one is again a freeware plugin. It's by Audio Damage called the Rough Rider. And I'm using the Drum Bus Squisher preset. I don't think I've changed anything on there. So that sounds like this. And we're nearly to the finished sound. Okay. What else did I do? Well, I came back to our original break on this channel with our send to the grit channel. And um, basically what I did was um, I added in some a high pass and a high shelf on an EQ. Sorry, I need to dial this back in a bit the original dry signal. Then I've added a sample delay to delay the left and the right channels a little bit. Then again a bit crusher, just 1 dB of drive, set a 12 bit. And then I'm sending it back to our original grit channel. So, and what I did also was I added another sample delay to this, uh, to the grit channel. Obviously, because this is in mono, we can't delay it left and right independently. It's just delaying the uh, sample as a whole. But with that added, we're still getting the dry signal from this one. So that's delayed left and right and then we're getting this one which is delaying also 
so we're getting a very phasey sound there uh, or quite a phasey sound and you do need to be careful with phase issues um, but it can also be used as an effect um, and as to me as long as it sounds good and you know all we have to do is play around with these um, delay times um, I found with this head crusher plugin that it, I think it it adds a little bit of delay so if you're using it in parallel with with another channel you get some phase issues um, but if you as long as you kind of tweak it until it sounds good to your ears I don't see a problem with it um, so that's pretty much it the only other thing I'm doing is on the main output and again I'm using a game plugin just to bring down that volume before we have any other processing then I'm using this plugin, which again is a free one by Shattered Glass Audio. It's called the Code Red Free, which uh, adds quite a nice bit of kind of analog sounding kind of saturation and compression. And you can see the settings here. I've boosted the highs ever so, ever so slightly. Um, I've changed the left and the right ones on classic, ones on pop, and then I've pushed the output amount up and then I've brought the wet dry amount down so without it sounds like this sorry I need to take these solos off now with and then again on the after that I'm using a camel crusher uh, with basically um, just a bit of compression thrown in and that's again I'm using it like a limiter so we don't get any um, clipping on the main output so let's just remind ourselves quickly we've gone from this to this So quite a bit of difference there and that was a lot of fun to do and I mean you could use these kind of same techniques and uh, on anything vocal samples any instrumental things anything that you've made yourself and you've bounced to audio um, it's just really about being creative and experimental and playing about with things until you get something that sounds unique and that's really all it's about and there's no right or wrong it's just experimenting and seeing what you can come up with so I hope you enjoyed that one today and hopefully I'll make another video for you soon thanks guys peace out